Hey, how is it going? I'm Ralph, and today I'm recording a webcast about multitasking versus 100% commitment. Uh, it's one of the things I discover again and again uh, during my work is that you know companies really want you to you know work full time, work, work, work to deliver, deliver, deliver. But on the other hand, they they really have something wrong. They have people working on too many things in parallel, and essentially that kills their productivity. That means they are really busy all the time, but they don't work at their very best. And I just thought, hey, I'll record a web, quick webcast about that and show it to you, and uh, hopefully it will help you to, to get a better understanding about what I mean. A little bit about myself. So I started as a programmer in 97, and when you come out of university, you start programming, and suddenly you realize that oh, everything you've learned is great, but there are other problems. What is the right process to develop software? I think this is something which, at least in my case, was not really addressed. So then I discovered the unified process with uh, UML, especially the use case approach and all of those things around uh, I really liked. And uh, this was for me really the approach, I guess, until the year 2000 when I came in contact with uh, Agile and Extreme Programming. It's when I read the book from Kent Beck. Extreme programming embrace change, and this really was a life changer for me, which I followed from then then on. In two thousand three, I added Scrum to the mixture. Uh, I mean, XP is really really strong on the technical side, like with the engineering practices, pair programming, test driven development, continuous integration, all those good things. It's rather silent on the the requirements. The requirement engineering side about how to collaborate with the client, how to make sure you develop the right product, how to get feedback, and all those things. And in 2003, I combined those two approaches and have been really being happy with that since then. Um, a little bit about myself. Originally, I'm from from Germany. Uh, I didn't work that much there, though. Actually, so after about a year in Germany, I moved to to England where I was working for Oracle on uh, Designer 2000 and later on Chain Developer. During my studies, I had done a, uh, a trainee here in Paris for a couple of months at Texas Instruments, which was a really great experience. But after, after London, uh, I moved over to New York, where I worked for a consulting company in downtown Manhattan, which was a great experience, uh, city-wise, I guess. <laughs> and uh, well, after the dot-com bubble burst, uh, I found a new job in uh, Silicon Valley, south of San Francisco. I was there for uh, for eight years, and this, my first job was there to work with a biotech, a life science company, to help them transition to to agile. And that's where I set up my first XP agile team in two thousand one, and it had been working really well. So everybody was pleased with that, and then I became more like a company internal consultant, and I toured the company, went from one department to the other one and help them to to become agile with approaches like continuous integration, certain uh, yeah, backlog management and things like that. So I've come around a little bit, uh, which was a great experience for me, like from uh, the culture side as well. The, the nice thing about agile, what I've discovered is that, you know, you have different starting points from where you are cultural, from where you are economy-wise and things like that, but the end result is very, very comparable. Um, then in 2009, I moved back to Europe. Right now, I'm here in Bern, in Switzerland, the capital. Uh, I was joining a company called Sulke there for two years, and I helped them to uh, kickstart their agile offerings. Uh, Sulke is a very well-known uh, consulting company in, in Switzerland, a little bit in Germany as well. Um, but then in 2011, I decided, hey, let's walk the talk for real. Uh, I founded my own company, Effective Agile, which we have here. And uh, this is kind of how the landing page of the website looks like. So right now I'm really living my dream. I'm going to clients, small or large, and I, I help them to become agile. So I go in, I listen to them, I try to understand what their real problems are, uh, and then we really collaborate tightly, uh, and uh, together we work out a plan how to make this transition from where they are right now, usually it's waterfall, uh, to agile. And it's great fun. Um, it works out great. Uh, most of the clients are really happy, and uh, this is a great experience for me as well. So here we have a 
quote also from Ken Schwaber, with whom I'm working together since 2010. When I became a trainer with uh, Scrum.org, I'm actually Europe's first Scrum trainer. And uh, again, this is like tons of experience, like exchange with the other trainers, having one-on-one -on -one talks with Ken Schwaber about certain uh, elements of Scrum, certain problems we face. Uh, and this is also helping me a lot uh, with my company. So that was pretty much about me. Uh, that's Ken and I, so we meet here and there again, which as I said, is always a pleasure and always a good learning experience. But I think it's time for the talk. Let's now move over to multitasking with us 100% commitment. So what I'm trying to show you here is, and it's like a little bit like an animation, I'm trying to uh, show you what it means to do something really 100% focus or to do several things in parallel. Let's say you work at a classical company where you develop software in a defined linear fashion, waterfall, where you go through a planning phase, an analysis phase, design phase, development phase, testing phase, release phase, and essentially you bring out everything at the very end. And that's how long it takes if you have 100% commitment for that project. Okay, so the important thing is you plan everything, you analyze everything, you design everything, you develop everything, you test everything, you release everything. In this process, everything is organized by activity, okay? You don't care about the features, you do always everything. And then you move from step to step. Now let's say that something happens halfway through the design phase. And what do you do in a company when something happens and you need to react to that? You create a new project. You assign a couple of people to join that team to work on that project and to find a solution. If it's a really important project, you get fancy names like Alpha Team or Tiger Team, stuff like that. Um, but overall, it means you create a new project but the problem is that you know people are not hanging around in a company being bored and saying, hey, I have nothing to do, let me join that, comp uh, that, that, that team. It's more like you have to rip them out of uh, existing teams, but the existing project still needs to keep a certain date. So, you know, there's already this conflict I'm trying to address. And, uh, and that's when we come to this multitasking thing, or often it's an auto this full-time equivalent. That's a term I really dislike a lot full-time equivalent like three half uh, three one-third people is one real person works on excel not in reality but anyway let's say we have only one team within that company and now that this one team has to work on two projects because we have this ongoing project and we have this project uh, which we have to handle now because something has popped up so we then say, well, mathematically, we were 50% on this one and 50% on the other one. But that's not true because the reality is that, and there's this nice graphic from Jared Weinbeck from his book, Quality Software Management Systems Thinking. It means if you work 100% on one project, you work 100% on one project, and that's great. You can really wrap your brain around that one thing and really stay focused all the time and work effectively. What happens if you work on two projects? You see this red box here? That's 20% of loss. That's 20% of loss for task switching, thrashing. Okay? Our brain is not really built for doing that. So essentially it means we have 20% taken out of the 100%, remains 80%, we divide it by two because we're working on two projects, that means we have only 40% uh, real working time per project. And it gets worse. If, if we get go over to uh, three projects, we lose 40%. That means we have 60% to share between the three projects, which makes 20%. For four, it's 60, it goes down again. So you can really see if you work on three, four projects, you work all the time, but you're not really productive. And that is the problem, okay? So keep that, keep those numbers in mind. So going onward from this point, we only have then 40% productivity going forward. 
So that means that the analysis, uh, the planning phase for the new project we are starting off, and please keep in mind that the amount of work we have here and the amount of work we have th over there for the new project is exactly the same. It is just, it now takes more than twice as long. Because 50% would be twice as long, 40% makes it even longer. And the design phase where we are halfway through also takes a little bit longer now, more than twice as long. And going forward, this is how it looks. Okay, so then we have our first project finished. We make a major release, like this Big Bang thing again. And the good thing is now, because since this one project is done, we can go back and focus 100% on the other one. The development goes a little bit faster, and then we will go back to our original schedule we had in the first project, and then we're done at this point. And again, a major release at the very end. Okay, so now just as comparison, let's assume we have the same setup again. Something happens. But now we have one person in the company saying us, telling us, hey, let's not do too many things in parallel. It's not good. I have the strong feeling that if we stay focused on what we do and we finish that and then we switch over and stay focused on the other thing, we will be faster. So we bring home this project, we make a major release and we start the other one and we bring it home and we have another major release. And this is how long it takes if we can work 100% on each project highly focused, okay? And this difference we have here between this green line and this orange line over there, that's the 20%. That's the loss we have had by doing too many things in parallel, okay? And the interesting element, I think, is also that, you know, if we go up here to this orange line here, this is when we release this first project in multitasking mode. That means we're actually pretty much done with both projects uh, if we do it in, in serial. I think that's also very interesting. So I think there's one problem with, with, with it's not a problem, it's more like a setting factor, I would guess. You know, in, in the upper approach, if something goes wrong and, and you know somebody has to be blamed, you can tell, you know what, we were doing everything. We were working on those two projects in parallel. We were switching forward and backward. We we juggled it. We It was tough and we failed. I'm sorry, but we did everything we can. This sounds pretty well. It shows, you know, well, you, you really kind of uh, stretching thin. And the other approach here, this looks more like a tunnel vision, more like... Uh, well, I can only do one thing, I'm not a multitasker, I'm not flexible, I start something and I finish it before I start the other one. So I think like from a, from a selling perspective, the approach above shows much more like willingness to sacrifice, to, you know, to do a death match than down there. And I think this is also one of the reasons uh, we tend to do the, the above approach. One important thing is that until the end of the design phase, we have nothing but paper, okay? Because we do everything for everything. So we plan everything, we analyze everything, we design everything. And once we are done with the design, we have those big binders of paper or electronic data, which we then turn into the software in our development phase. That means it actually doesn't give us a chance to to really react in another way than to start a new project and repeat that same approach. But as you have seen, like, you know, starting a new project, asking with, uh, working with multitasking and full-time equivalents makes both projects slower. Therefore, you, they will be delayed and then you have to, as a reaction, usually start a third project, which works as the same paradigm and so on. So, you know, it, it, that's a vicious self-reinforcement cycle. Uh, it's hard to get out there and, and what I'm now continuing on is I try to tell you how you can handle that. Let's say we start to work not in a activity based sequence but we start to think in functionality. Let's say we plan for and we work with, with sprints, we work with something agile like Scrum. We plan our first sprint which is the planning phase, is this red bar over here on the left. And then we, <clears throat> we, we do everything in parallel. 
we analyze, we design, we test, and we make it ready for release. It doesn't have mean that we have to release every sprint, but we could if we wanted to, because every sprint we have working software, not just paper, working software. That's the big difference. So we make one sprint, we make a couple of other sprint, and then something happens, okay? And then let's just say, you know, whenever we have this, this, those lines in here between this thin separation, that's when one sprint ends and the other sprint starts. There's actually no real gap, like a sprint ends on a Wednesday and starts on a Thursday. But essentially it means it's like this is where we can make a clean transition, okay, from one project to the other one. Let's say something happens, and here this is where we have this transition point. We decide let's do one more sprint and let's make a small functional release, uh, a point release where we have uh, certain bundles of functions which are worthwhile for the clients to use and we give it out. And then we go and we also create the documentation because you know documents about the architecture, about certain aspects of the software is important. And But the thing is we want to do exactly as much as is needed, not more, not less what is needed. So, as I had said that at the end of every sprint, we have working software, but this is written down what we call our definition of done. What does it really mean to be done? And this also then includes testing. That means we will bring in all uh, documentation. That would then mean that we bring in all the documentation we have to have in as well. So we would create the documentation as we develop the software. Which is nice because then we've exactly documented what we did, not more, not less, and it will be right because it's not stale. Then we move over to the other project, we work a couple of sprints, we make another point release there, and then we go back to the first project and we make a couple of sprints, point release, forward and forward, and then we are done. So, what's the difference between this approach now and this approach? First, time wise, it still takes the same amount of time, it's not faster. I still think, I believe it will be faster for many other social reasons uh, when you work in a self-organizing uh, servant leadership environment. But just like from a work amount, it will take the same. And, uh, but the point is that because after every sprint we have working software, we can react to changes. We Not immediately, but let's say one sprint later, we can push something out, we can swap forward and backward. And... Those transitions, they help the teams essentially, you know, you work for two weeks on this and then you go over to the other project and you work for two weeks on that. There is a little bit of task switch and there is some loss, but it's only once every two weeks and it probably takes you whatever, two, three hours to make this mind swap, but then you're in into the new new, new problem again. And then you can work focused on this one and you go forward and backward. So this means in this setup, you are far more responsive to customer needs to changes on the market uh, and all the other things which can happen because we live in a complex world things are really short-lived so this is great but actually it's not there where we want to be because where we want to be is we want to really think in features okay we really want to get away from thinking in project we just want to think in features because features this is the vehicle which brings value to the end user, which makes the end user happy, which makes them willing to pay our product. So we find out what are the right features and we deliver, develop them and deliver them as quickly as possible. Bring them out, get feedback, can react to that. And this essentially means that we work for a couple of sprints and we make a small functional release. It's not much, but it's there and it's working and it's good software, okay? Because it is done, it is documented, tested, everything you need to need to have, you make a small functional release with a little bit of documentation and you go to the other one. And at this point when something happens, as we have it over here, it doesn't really matter anymore. You see, this is this is the beauty of that. It doesn't matter. Something happens, you just say, well, let's react to that. And you can. That's the important thing. Because you have this, you think in functionality, not in activity anymore. Like we have it up there where we plan everything, analyze everything and so on. Here we think in features completed let's push them out so we go forward and backward and this is then how we can kind of generate value quickly for our customers how we can collect feedback incorporate that learn as we go and this is not the lean principle where we say decide as late as possible but deliver as fast as you can the later we make a decision 
the more information we have at hand, the better the, the decision will be. But on the other hand, we have to deliver as fast as we can. And again, this is the combination where Scrum and XP really shines because Scrum helps you to find out the right product and XP helps you to develop the product in a high quality, which is essentially releasable at any given time. Okay, so I hope this uh, visualized nicely for you the difference between working on several things uh, in parallel, multitasking, or if you can really have the chance to focus 100% on one thing and do that right. But once we have the focus of 100%, but we still work in a serial fashion, it's better, but it's still not as good as it can be. We really need to want to get down to thinking in uh, functional functions implemented and released. And there's a nice quote uh, for me at the end. Um, I think I read it on a Twitter, on a blog. I was trying to find it again. I can't. Uh, so if you know the source, please let me know. But the quote is excellent. It's saying multitasking is not a full commitment. It is a partial commitment and a partial commitment is not a real commitment okay I think the last couple of words not a real commitment you know if I have the chance to really focus as a human being on doing something I commit myself to that but if I have if I'm struggling every day by juggling too many things in parallel at the same time I do my very best but I'm not committed and I think this is a really important thing which every company should be aware about Okay, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed this webcast and stay tuned. There will be more. Bye.